Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today we're talking about slide film. When you're deciding what kind of film stock to choose from when shooting on really any kind of given format, you're faced with two main choices, negative film, or reversal film. Negative film will give you something that looks like this, and these are film negatives. Negatives are inverted versions of the images that you took in your camera. Negative film stocks, both black and white and color, also make up the widest variety of different types of films that are out there. Brands like Agfa and Adox and Ilford and Kodak and Fuji all make different types of negative film for you to be able to shoot. And they come in different variety of types with different characteristics and different ISO sensitivities for you to use in a variety of different situations. But there also exists this, and this is color slide film. Now, first of all, slide film and reversal film are the same thing, and the terms can be used interchangeably. So the really big difference between the two is that negative film comes back as an inverted image on the film. But on slide film, when you actually take that film out of your camera and have it properly developed, then it will come back to you looking like this as a positive image. Black and white negative and color negative film also have a difference in terms of the exposure latitude in comparison to slide film. Exposure latitude is the ability for the film to be overexposed or underexposed and still give you good looking results in the end. That means that you can overexpose your negative film and still come back with pretty good looking results. And again, this means that negative film is easier to work with in a much wider variety of situations. Things like really high contrast areas are easier to shoot with negative film as opposed to slide film. And especially for negative film, even if you don't nail that that exposure on the first attempt, you still have the ability to kind of edit it and get it to look the way that you want it to, especially in this digital age where we have things like Adobe Lightroom and other programs like that. Negative films also offer a wide variety of different ISO options when you're shooting. So there are a ton of different ones out there and pretty common ones like 200 and 400, but for negative films you can also get things as low as 50 ISO all the way up to 3200 ISO. Now the main difficulty of shooting on slide film is the fact that it has has a very, very limited latitude in terms of exposure, which means that it's harder to get a really good looking image if you don't nail that exposure on the first try. So slide film ultimately does not handle overexposure or underexposure very well at all. So if you're too far off on either side of a perfect exposure, then your images are gonna look kind of bad. These films are also much more contrasty and they give you more extreme shadows and highlights. So depending on your exposure when you're using negative films, you can still get a lot of detail in those shadows and those highlight areas of your image. But on slide film, you're gonna have highlights that are completely white and you're gonna have shadows that are completely black. And you're not gonna be able to pull back a lot of detail from those highlights and shadow areas of your image. So there's much less chance of being able to save a poorly exposed image on slide film when you're doing Doing editing later on. The options for slide film are also much more limited in comparison to negative film stock. There's only a handful of different slide films in production right now out there. And there's not a wide variety of ISO options for slide film either, meaning that its uses are a little bit more limited. For slide film, the common ISOs are 50 ISO and 100 ISO, which are much lower than the standard 200 or 400 ISO that a lot of people like to shoot and prefer to use when using negative film. So right now, professional quality slide film can be bought from both Kodak and Fujifilm in a couple of different options. Now professional slide film is stuff that's going to give you really high quality, vibrant, saturated results. And it is usually stuff that's priced at a bit more of a premium in comparison to a lot of other types of films. So Fujifilm makes Provia slide film, which comes in 35mm, 120 medium format, and 4x5 large format film. And it has an ISO of 100. They also make Velvia slide film, which comes in the same types of formats. And Velvia is available in ISO 100 and ISO 50. Provia and Velvia are both really vibrant, really saturated films. And I love breaking them out during the summer, especially when there's a lot of daylight outside to be able to shoot with. I also typically find Provia to be a little less saturated than Velvia, but Velvia can also give you better looking skin tones when you're taking pictures of people. Now besides Fuji's slide film, Kodak makes Ektachrome. Ektachrome is available in 35 millimeter roll film for photography formats, Super 8 millimeter for motion picture formats, and they recently reintroduced it 
in 16 millimeter format for motion picture as well. Now for a long time, Ektachrome was a big staple in terms of the slide film options out there, but Kodak discontinued all of their slide film in 2012 and only now have recently reintroduced it. And this is really exciting because there is not a huge variety of slide film choices out there for people who want to shoot it. Ektachrome is a really saturated, really contrasty type of film, just like Fuji's Velvia and Provia, which are pretty common characteristics of slide film in general. Now before Ektachrome came back, there was no color reversal film for Super 8 and 16mm that was widely in production and available for people to shoot. And this is really exciting because having a reversal film for Super 8 and 16mm means that you can shoot those formats in your motion picture cameras and actually project that film back once you get it. You can also find some lower quality slide film out there as well to play around with. Lomography has previously made their X-Pro slide film, which is actually just older slide film from a different company that's kind of outdated and just rebranded under Lomography's name. I've had okay results with this film and I've also had really gross looking results with this film. So it's kind of something you can play around with, but don't expect it to give you as high quality consistent results that you can achieve with things like Provia and Velvia and Ektachrome. Film Photography Project also sells Retrochrome, which is outdated government surplus Ektachrome. So it looks a little bit different and you get kind of some color shifts because of its age as well, but you can get it in slightly higher ISOs than the standard 50 and 100 that you would only get from Kodaks and Fujis. So slide film is designed differently from negative film in order to come out as an actual positive on the film when you develop it properly in its chemicals. The chemical process that it requires is much more intensive than a normal color negative and black and white negative film process. So in order for you to be able to shoot slide film and have it developed properly in order for it to come back to you as an actual positive image on the film that you shot, then you need to send it to a film lab that is capable of developing film in the E6 chemical process. Only a very small percentage of labs out there are capable of developing E6 films because it's more expensive expensive and much fewer people shoot E6 slide film than negative film. Now E6 stands for Eastman 6 and it's the modern slide film chemical process that all slide films use currently. So Provia and Velvia and Ektachrome and Retrochrome and any kind of slide film that you're going to find from the past several decades all use the E6 chemical process. So in comparison a normal color negative chemical process involves a developing chemical, a bleaching chemical, and a chemical called fit. But the E6 chemical process involves a first developer, a reversal bath, a color developer, a pre-bleach, a bleach, and a fixing process. Now there are home developing kits that combine that six step process into just three steps instead. But in general, labs that do E6 process do it in that full six bath process. Now you can, however, send E6 slide film through the normal C41 color negative process, and it will give you a negative version of your slide film but with wild different color shifts and different saturation and really crazy results. So if you're looking for normal results from your slide film, then you don't want to cross process your film. So slide film is something that you're going to pay more of a premium for. The film costs a little more, the developing costs a little more, and it's harder to find labs that are doing the E6 chemical process. Now for decades and decades, slide film was a really predominant type of film that was out there. And it was used for things like journalists and documentary filmmakers and magazines and National Geographic photo shoots. And there are tons of famous photos from over the years that were shot on reversal films instead of negative films. And they give you really vibrant, really beautiful results a lot of the time. Now, unfortunately, slide film has taken a big hit and the variety of slide film options has dwindled, especially in comparison to all the different types of film that you can get for color negative and black and white negative as well. And unfortunately, we're left with only a handful of different options for shooting slide film if we want to do it. It's really a kind of film that has its particular uses. And there's even more limitations because of that than there normally is by just shooting on film in general. You really need to hit that exposure really well when you're shooting in order to get really good looking images back. Or you might kind of come up a little bit disappointed with the pictures that you get back when you're shooting slide film. And that can be really discouraging. 
but I encourage you to try out slide film and use it and not to get discouraged if you mess up a roll. Because especially for shooting film, nothing's ever gonna improve if you just get discouraged by shooting one roll and then kind of give up on it. Now for me, slide film is something that I really wanted to start shooting because of the projection aspect of it. See, with slide film, you have the ability to have your film actually cut up and mounted after you finish taking the roll. And then you can actually look at them and project them on slide projectors. Negative film, is really great for being able to store and put away and always have access to if something goes wrong and you lose your other copies of those images. But slide film is something that can have a use after it's developed. It's worth hanging on to and making that extra effort in order to be able to mount it and look at them. See, for years and years, slide film was also used largely in schools because it was a slideshow. And you would be able to get slide projectors in order to actually load up your own mounted slides and project them onto a wall or a screen and actually look at them blown up right there in front of you. It's such an amazing way to be able to look at the colors and the detail of the images that you actually shot on your camera in the way that the film is kind of meant to be seen. I was really largely introduced to slide film through my grandfather's slide collection, which I got to digitize and look at all these slide films that I had never seen before, but looked really, really beautiful. So slide film is more of a premium thing and it requires a little bit more precision and time and effort in order to take good photos when you're manually exposing. But once you actually shoot those rolls and send them away and have them develop, then there's nothing that I personally love more then getting really well developed slide film back and just being able to take a look at the roll for the first time and being able to mount them and hold them up to the light and actually take a look at the images that I've captured straight out of my camera on the film. And just being able to see something like that is something that is really unique and really special to shooting this specific type of film. And ultimately, just no digital file is ever going to give me something like this. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post more content like this every week about different analog stuff. And if you're at all interested in supporting the channel, there is a link in the description for the Patreon of Analog Resurgence. I'm also working to kind of change things up and make things look a little bit different. So let me know what you think about the new look of the channel. And if there's any kind of topics that you want me to tackle in the future and talk about in terms of film and photography and motion picture formats and just gear, like weird little questions or things Things that you've come across let me know in the comments down below i'll do my best to cover as much stuff as i possibly can in the future through my own experience and just some added research on top of that so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon